Hi, everyone. My name is Stefan Malmberg. I'm one of the founders of Detectivio. Uh, I'm also a doctor and a medical researcher. So what are we working on at Detectivio? So we're doing software for measuring health with cameras. It enables remote checkups in telemedicine, and it improves triage in hospital emergency departments. It does more than that, and I'll tell you more uh, in a bit. So emergency department waiting rooms uh, was the place where it all started, and the challenge that we identified and set out to solve. And I'm going to come back to the emergency departing, uh, waiting room, but first I want to tell you a little bit about uh, why uh, I became one of the founders of Detectivio and why we're doing this in particular. So, uh, when I grew up, I was fascinated by electronics and computers and did all kinds of crazy things, coding and um, uh, building networks and um, had some first jobs without any education in IT. And I believe in this crowd and this place, that's not unique at all. I guess almost everyone has that background. Uh, but it was quite unusual when I entered med uh, medical school and uh, did like software development on the side. And it um, it's, gives me a special perspective uh, that I bring into medicine. So after I had worked uh, in several emergency hospitals and clinics, I I noticed that we were doing all these important measurements, we were making assessments based on important measurements. But for me, the available methods to do these measurements weren't good enough. And um, they were hand-operated, cumbersome, spread infections, analog. We had to enter the information by hand into the systems. So I decided I wanted to look for better solutions. and. Uh, so doctors like me have been looking for better solutions, and like better ways to assess uh, disease, especially in emergencies. Um, but for me, it's, it comes natural to, to look at it from a technology perspective. So can technology bring a solution? Can we improve the disease severity assessment? Can we improve patient and provider experience? Can we improve accuracy and ease of use and patient safety? And at the same time, integrate digitally to the healthcare ecosystem. Those were the challenges that we started out with. And I realized early on that I wouldn't be able to do it on my own. I needed uh, a more technical founder uh, to come with me. Or actually, I didn't know we were going to found a company. I just wanted to explore this uh, challenge. And uh, I was so lucky to find Taha Khan, my co-founder, uh, who came at the same problem from, from a different angle. So he's a data scientist and engineer who did a, his PhD on medical applications uh, of AI using sensors. So I was really excited when I heard about, it, uh, heard about him. And it turned out that his father and brother are doctors, so we could actually speak medicalese to each other and communicate in a good way. And um, we started out collaborating, doing small projects. And after a while, we decided, OK, are we going to do this as pure research? Or do we want to build products? And, change things and we yeah as you figured out we decided on the latter and and started uh, detective you and since then we've added uh, more great people to the team and continue building this great team to, to make this technology available uh, in healthcare and beyond so back to the emergency department i'm sure that several of you have been to the emergency department for yourself or for someone else who needed help and it's the same all over the world. Uh, chances are that you had to wait for hours. And uh, you're thinking, like, who needs help first? Maybe you were thinking, it has to be me. <laughs> That's usually the case. Could actually be the person sitting next to you. But how is the doctor or nurse going to know? How, how do they know who needs help first? The problem is that in that setting, delay causes harm suffering, and sometimes, tragically, even death. So it's important to get it right. And of course, there is an established process. It's called triage, and it's 
it's, the goal is to identify who needs help first. And uh, it's based on measuring the vital signs patient by patients. And while the patients stay in the clinic, repeated measurements uh, help to detect trends over time. So what are these vital signs that I keep talking about? It's actually just a group term for uh, measurements that you've heard about before. Heart rate or pulse, respiratory rate, oxygen saturation, blood pressure, and body temperature. And these are like the fundamental metrics of um, human physiology, you could say. So instead of having someone placing different sensors and gadgets on your body, with our software and camera-based measurements, instead it would be a quick scan of the face from a one meter distance. For the temperature measurements, we're using an infrared ra radiometric special camera, but all the other um, vital signs are measured with the standard RGB sensor optics. Uh, and um, it makes, it, it makes the measuring the vital signs as easy as using a camera. And of course, it's a digital, so it, it goes straight into whatever system uh, is used. So how does it work? Input from a camera, and then the software does face detection and region of interest uh, detection. It extracts the digital signal. And in that signal, we can identify thousands of different features that we then use in the AI algorithms. And we get vital signs as output. The three last steps can be done um, locally or in the cloud. So the core activities, uh, what we do is like deep tech AI research. Uh, we build software, we measure the performance of that software, and then we learn from the data. So when we build software, we use digital signal processing, machine learning, computer vision. Measuring the performance is probably where we're most unique because we need to do clinical trials, cl clinical data collection to get that, um, that range of high and low blood pressure, for example. And we do medical validation because we need medically, uh, medically educated and trained nurses and doctors to do the reference measurements so we know that it's high quality. And we have the, our digital lab to do tests and so on. We're really grateful for the academic collaborations that we have that makes this possible. And then we take the data, train the AI, of course, but we can also see uh, it's like a feedback loop where we can see how we need to improve the software. And then that's, that's the, we go back to building new software and so on. So that's what we do. Clinical validation also needs to publishing medical uh, journals, medical papers in journals. So this is a publication from earlier this year, published in, in uh, the journal Infectious Diseases. I'm not going to say the impossibly long title, but to sum it up, the, uh, we had some promising and robust results, uh, even in a challenging environment. So our vision to lead the development and worldwide adoption of contactless health measurements for life-critical decisions speaks to the fact that we're not only uh, using this technology inside of healthcare, uh, but we see a huge potential of using the same software in many different situations outside of healthcare. Um, so, for example, in a car, uh, if this software uh, was there, it could uh, detect and prevent accidents if there was a health issue with the driver. And the same goes, like similarly, this could be done for pilots, uh, or bus drivers, but also in many industries where there are dangerous equipments and so on. So the first step for us is to bring this um, from the hospitals and one step, a small step, uh, out into the world to the uh, telemedicine space, enabling remote checkups uh, for patient monitoring of chronic diseases. Uh, it increases the utility of telemedicine and improves the remote assessment and diagnostic capability and it means that patients can stay at home while getting a high quality assessment and the right help that they need. So that's why I'm really proud uh, to launch our API software for health measurements in telemedicine as a partner program where we work with selected partners to integrate these measurements in the telemedicine experience. And it's really like we're closing the last mile for telemedicine to be able to deliver true healthcare. And I just want to leave with one final note. Like, the next time you talk to an online doctor, or the next time you hear an ambulance speeding towards the hospital, 
Uh, I want you to think about the important measurements that you need to do. And uh, hopefully you'll think about the amazing technology that you heard about today. Thank you.